Praise the Lord. I love my dear brothers and sisters. It gives me a great pleasure again to stay united through these online or offline sessions, rather you can call it as, because we are recording and posting, therefore you can call it either online, offline, whatever. <laughs> the good news is I'm very glad that we are always unified under one name and we all assemble and gather under this one name to give glory to this one name. And that's the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As always, it's a honor, it's a privilege. It, it gives me a lot of delight in my heart that none other tasks that I do in my life, right, at my workplace or whatever I get into, I don't get this kind of delight in my heart. And why it is so special? Because we are talking about a great God, the great God, I would say, wrong English. And he had written, what, thousand books? I was just kidding. Just one book, and that's called his gospel. The word of truth, yeah? Written from his fingertips and written from his heart. The words from his very heart proceeds through his mouth. And Holy Spirit inspires and convicts many people the disciples of God, and then he ensures that they are all written down there. <clears throat> and that's why you and I are in this business of talking through these words, talking through these scriptures, even after several thousands of years, 6,000 plus years, these words have not passed away. They are real, they are true. The revelations, the prophecies, and the words of uh, truth and that builds faith in us stands tall. And what gives us the blessed hope? These words of God. And when you're grounded and rooted in these words of God, there is nothing that can separate you from the love of God. This can be only experiences. How much ever we are going to describe it, preach it, teach it, you may hear thousands of sermons, you may be um, attending sermons and this is your what one ten thousand sermon nothing changes not, you know nothing brings that difference makes the difference or brings the change except and unless and until you are grounded and rooted in the word of God and that's why you need to be involved take part um, and be part of these teachings where <clears throat> you always um, you know uh, why you should get involved is you you understand certain methods of learning, right? There are methods to learn the Bible. You have methods to learn mathematics and physics and science and history. You cannot apply the methods of mathematics to the subject of science or Hindi or Kannada or whatever third language, right? You have different methods to learn things. Likewise, there is a specific method in which you should learn this Bible and that's what we have been teaching and explaining and narratively with practical illustrations and case studies and all that. All right, warm well, welcome to one and all of you again to this series where we are dealing about the two important aspects, the spiritual anatomy and the physical anatomy. Physical anatomy comprises of body and mind, which means all the organs in your body, blood vessels, every drop of blood, every single cell. Likewise, spiritual anatomy is made up of, made up of spirit and soul, and the Holy Spirit works with your spirit in partnership, in fellowship. Yeah, as much as your physical anatomy is important, you take that health insurances and you spend lots of money in paying the premium. And why? Because if something happens, hmm, if I'm admitted in ICU, some emergency happens, I need to have that insurance. And therefore, insurance covers and takes care of my surgery or every single thing that is needed. Likewise, where is your spiritual insurance? Mm. And here, no emergency. There is just one emergency that's called as death. Physically, you are dead, and spiritually, you are alive. Your soul goes either to paradise or all the way to the place of torment that's hell. What will be your condition if the spiritual emergency strikes your life, which you didn't plan for, which you, which you didn't think about? You are so focused on your physical anatomy and not on your spiritual anatomy. That's exactly the reason why we kicked off this series and this is our 52nd session and 
we are dealing through various subjects from the bible and connecting it to our lifestyle habitual practices and much to do with the outcome of your spirit which is exposed through your body and mind yes and these are the things which are very very important through these last days and not only through the last days right from the time the world was formed spiritual <clears throat> anatomy was not given due attention and that's why sin entered into life of eve and adam yes they were only focusing on their physical anatomy you know they want to get that wisdom knowledge and evil luxury in your life and you will become like god and all that externally they were focusing and not internally you know they were not focusing on the spirit um related aspects or spiritual deeds yeah and the same story continues even today not with all but most you know definitely 99% of the <clears throat> world is on the devil side either clinging to the entertainment industry or to some other doctrines or atheists or some of them are you know mad in sports and they have no time to even sit at home always in the ground and some of them are mad in academics and they keep on studying and after graduations and doctorate and phd and that's not enough and yeah you see the world is diversified and all of them being kept busy and 99% of the people in the world are busy the remaining 1% of people are also busy but then they know how to control their business and confine the limits of their busy deeds they are not busy bodies they are busy but then they confine it within the date or 10 hours and then they ensure that they dedicate that time yeah because why their heart is always towards god but they have the earthly duties and responsibilities therefore they have to give an account of the these earthly <clears throat> earthly duties and responsibilities and therefore they have to work they have to earn they have to support their family they have to take care of their children yeah therefore they work but they know how to confine it and if it exceeds probably they quit the job and they find another job that gives them more time why because they never would be the compromisers it's called as licentiousness in mark 7 21 22 i think you can read and see the act of licentiousness or bible says you know you're a compromiser and uh, there is another behavior called as sensuality sensual behavior john chapter 3 um you can take and read 16 17 18 one of these verses you will see that sensual behavior that means you are a compromiser in your spiritual standards or quality because you want to earn more and you want to no uh, gain more uh, money or you want to you want promotions and you want this and that and <clears throat> and therefore you don't care much about the spiritual quality there are many brothers who are deceived in that uh, direction too and why it is important not to be deceived is because you don't get the second chance i keep saying this to fix all of these here now don't say i'm just 40 and i have some more time you never know brother there are many young people who have died that dead and gone god doesn't allow disaster but god stipulates the age limit and it it god only knows we cannot question him right your age could end by 50 and now you are already 45 what would you do your age could end by 70 and now you are already 65 your age could be age limit could be 40 and now you are already 30 you have just 10 more years now you don't have to think that oh am i going to be dead soon not like that but how prepared you are to face that physical death and to be alive spiritually that your soul stands in front of god in that white throne judgment what would you be what would be your situation is what you and i need to start thinking yeah we are not trying to demotivate you discourage you or oh, you will be dead soon and all that nothing like that but all of us will have to be dead and gone some day can you deny that fact may god bless you may may you live 100 years okay brother brother okay you're 50 years you want to live 100 years fine you have only 50 more years do you know that how quickly it passes <coughs> and never ever think oh i can fix in the last moment no it's not easy why i keep telling you you would have crossed and gone 10000 miles down deep down in the trap that has been dug by the devil in the paths of deception 
you think he's going to allow you to walk back 10000 miles to ground level zero and then start your spiritual journey from zero have you understood there is no trench or tunnel from the 10000th mile and you can quickly connect in one what to say in just one or two miles to your spiritual path no you have to walk back and what you have spent 50 years to reach that 10000th mile in that this uh, pathway of deception and uh, you know tragedy and whatever and then you will spend another 50 years what today you get light it will take another 50 years to come back this is how you should think you understand what i'm saying you are 40 years old huh? today you have light on something you will take the same amount of time to come back that is the extreme position i'm saying it's not easy to defeat temptations no it depends like how, the older you become the more farther or more far away you have traveled away from the love of god away from the word of god and those are all recorded in your conscience your spirit is completely disturbed your body and mind are exposed to the worldly deeds and they are used to those habitual practices and the wiles of the devil and 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 they are not at all comfortable um in understanding these scriptures why because you have taken them too far away in this journey yes and therefore you need to spend enough time to come backwards all the way backward and then start from level 0 okay this is one aspect second aspect that i keep telling you while you are coming backward you think devil will roll out roll down a red carpet and say okay okay come go please go join with god he is going to ensure that you travel another 5000 miles he is going to bring in more temp- temptations he is going to pull in more uh, resources more demonic weapons much more wicked demons bible also says that no when a man Uh, repents and returns back to his original position he brings seven more wicked devils to deceive him and that's his only job to devour deceive and therefore your life is not going to be any easy that's why i'm saying today is your chance this hour this moment is your time beloved repent come back to your senses and be the children of light and god is always wonderful right you might have taken for 40 years to travel all the way 10000 miles of away from god but then <clears throat> you had this realization you are very aggressive you are very serious you repent so badly olden days they tear their clothes and all they put an ashes heap of ashes over their head and they sit at the roadside and they repent badly to expose how much serious they are to reconcile with god reunite with god and regain the presence of god and god always was very very compassionate and they received the word of god see how he had humbled uh, himself and all that so many kings you can see in the book of uh, what is it second chronicles you can see they wear the sack clothes which is the cloth of slavery yeah and surrenderance and cloth of sorrow clothing of sor- sorrow and grief and god answered them battle belongs to the lord the spirit of the lord came and spoke to them the battle belongs to the lord you will stand still and see what the lord is going to do tomorrow uh, and then he blessed them and they blessed place as place of baraka because the spoils they collected were so plentiful jehoshaphat king jehoshaphat you know that story right so when you humble yourself i'm not exactly saying it's going to be another 40 years to come to ground level zero for god anything is impossible with god and it's sorry with god is anything is possible right and with men it is impossible it could happen even in a instantaneous moment of time that yeah miraculously you will be fast forwarding and come to ground level zero but it's very rare case scenario i'm telling you it's very rare case scenario therefore it's very serious or you may reach in one year or you may reach in the extreme always go for the extreme right therefore you value the time because why human flesh is so feeble beloved why because you you have gone too far away into that aspect of feebleness and you are the reason for this feeble quality you are not created timid or feeble you are created strong and brave enough with words of, with the wisdom of god and in the image of god it is you and you and i who have gone too far away away from god 
and therefore it's not easy to come back that's why today is your chance beloved start it and never think oh i will take another 40 years i'm not i'm saying the extreme rare case scenario but then if you're so serious you're desperate you are aggressive and you're talking to god and you want to fix things you want to fix your errors definitely god is merciful he is compassionate is bound to his mercy so who knows probably in a day's time you will be all right you will be in ground zero yeah with god all things are possible right the next very hour you will be in ground zero <clears throat> but god god is merciful to nullify all your errors but how serious and how greater is your repentance that that is what god will check okay we had been dealing with the subject of tongues and prayer prophecies um, from the book of first corinthians and 14 and from 1 to 20 this is our eighth session of eighth or ninth session i just in count but we spent ample time in analyzing these qualities which paul had spoken and he has written about it <clears throat> excuse me and we st- we 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 stopped with this unbelievers tongues assigned to unbelievers and who were these unbelievers and who could be an unbeliever yeah people those who call themselves as believers in christ could they be really a believer or an un- or an unbeliever we analyzed all of these in the past two sessions and especially the last session we stuck to only one verse that verse number 20 and we spoke about the maturity of a christian are they babes in christ or are they matured adults in christ yeah and we spoke a, b- a bit about the in malice be babes babes right when you want to harm somebody you become a baby and we spoke little bit about this baby fights very cute to watch isn't it and they don't harm each other of course they fight but they don't harm each other they don't hurt each other and in a hours time they forget they become friends that must be the character of a christian christ christ like mindset philippians 2:5 says what is what it is your words will be seasoned with grace what it is yeah you will have that humility to forgive your brethren and sisters 1 john 4:20 matthew 6:14 ephesians 4:232 and colossians 4:6 wonderful words of god you meditate it offline you need to engrave these words in your heart because each time you end up in fight and quarrels and disputes and misunderstandings misapprehensions misconceptions and yeah you feel like slapping somebody these words will stop you that's the power of the word that's the power of the promise that's why you and i should be grounded and rooted in the word of god word of god and nothing else can replace the word of god the word of god stands unique stands tall yeah it's a truth by itself and no person can replace it no human being can replace it that easily no one can replace it's impossible yeah from verse 21 we will begin our meditation i am always trying my best to close this chapter and move on with other meditations because there are lots of things to cover and somebody asked me 52 hours you spoke only on this concept of body mind spirit and soul i said yes and i also told something else i somehow feel i am only 10% done and the brother was laughing <laughs> not taking any pride but then i am telling you bible and the words of god are so detailed and so wonderful yeah they are like treasures and where do you get treasures you have to dig for it yes treasures are not going to be thrown on the streets no gold is going to be available only in certain topographies of the earth and diamonds are going to be available in only at certain places you got to reach their traveling and you have to dig for it and all that certain portions of africa it's known for diamond uh you uh, know uh, segregated diamonds are segregated there now don't have ideas of traveling to africa immediately okay verse 21 in the law it is written now he speaks about the character of a christian as much as he is behaving like that like those babes while he is angry and then that justifies what is his understanding in christ and his maturity level as far as his spiritual journey is concerned or the condition of his spirit is concerned the spiritual maturity is determined based on the condition of your spirit and who is the partner of your spirit who is governing and dealing with your 
spirit related matters what is the spirit related matters that is exactly what we have been talking for the last 52 hours brother go through all the sessions yeah spiritual composition the spiritual anatomy uh, we spoke about the physical anatomy right that's exactly what he is saying here in the law now immediately that is what i like in paul immediately he refers the old testament and then connects it with the new testament he is a scholar right he knows how to connect there is no one like paul and peter appreciates him what a richness in his content and if nobody understands it please don't preach and blabber peter wants all the disciples <laughs> that much he appreciates paul all the paul yelled at him everywhere you go and you behave like a hypocrite peter and peter still loves him can you believe this because why they are babes in christ mm. they want to all that they feel like disputing and quarreling but they babe, they are babes they don't harm okay in the law it is written with men of other tongues hmm? other lip and other lips i will speak to this people and yet for all that they will not hear me says the lord therefore tongues are for a sign not to those who believe but to unbelievers but prophesying is not for unbelievers but for those who believe i had read both the verses because they are intercoupled they both are connected okay the law it is written with men of other tongues and other lips the gift of tongues had been already written and prophesied in the old testament that the men will receive after the resurrection of christ the holy spirit will descend and then they will receive this gift of tongues all these were spoken i will speak to this people through those gifts of tongues and nothing but the prophetical words interpretation all that we discussed no detail i won't get in there again interpretation gift of tongues and all that and then look at the last portion and yet for all that they will not hear me you understand what it what does this brother completely confusing we understood gift of tongues we understood it will be interpreted we will it will be clearly revealed to us what god is trying to uh, tell us and it is a response for our prayers our supplications then what is this they will not hear me this is exactly what we had been talking no what is that spirit of faith matured christians trusting god having not seen him yes having confidence in christ in the middle of problematic situation and not enforcing for a sign you show this to me then i will believe you are god are you talking in that language may god let god do it then let me see where will you see the moment you see it will be lake of fire already and is the god the loser many people think they are doing a favor to god as if you know god is at their mercy and they have he has to conduct a miracle to win their soul no god is not a, a person who is after this quantitative uh, stuff you know he is not bothered about the numbers how many members are in my church the pastors some people some pastors fight with each other you poach my believers huh? they are believers what is this church is planted by christ and church has been the foundation stone is laid by christ therefore it's not your church it's christ church the people have to be poached they are gone let them go god will replace it okay coming back to the original point you understand huh? who is unbeliever the definition of unbeliever we spoke about it a lot in the last 2 hours right and those that are dependent on these kind of gifts standing in queue or waiting at the doorstep of pastor's house huh? i want to want him to pray and prophesy what god is speaking for me instead of waiting 20 hours on the doorstep of that prophet or pastor why can't you wait on the feet of the lord and god is very merciful he doesn't make you wait for 20 long hours you need a response you are desperate speak to god and he is going to reply in style he is going to reply to you why because he is your loving father he is kind heart the bible says in isaiah 54 10 and 11 he is kind he is kind his heart is full of kindness yeah and he will not make you run after him and nudge him and all that no he's loving father which father behaves this way that 
your son is hungry and he's begging for food running behind you all the time papa give me some food to eat give me some food to eat i'm about to faint and he begs for a day and then the next day and for a week and for a month would you allow him to roam after you no in fact even before the uh, child opens its mouth you definitely know it's a feeding time and you will immediately arrange for dinner breakfast lunch and you would be calling in fact you will be after the kid isn't it you will be after your child come come let's eat it's a time it's time because you know it is going to harm him it's going to harm the little daughter if you don't feed the child on time and don't you think your father in heaven is trillion times loving and compassionate that he would have done everything in advance before even you would open your mouth and petition him that's the love of the father what is your understanding that's exactly what we are trying to evaluate right what is your understanding about god that is verse number 20 right but in understanding be mature that that's a command that's a commandment or a law or a command anything instruction anything you want to take it as take it but in understanding be mature if you are a matured christian you will not run after this pastor and that uh, brother and that sister and that prayer meeting this fasting meeting and all that never stay at home some people have you ever seen them never it is so hard for them to talk to god in faith because why i am not seeing god no how to believe that this god is here or not i know definitely it is with that pastor who told you that did you test the spirit of that pastor who's talking to you? how do you know it is truth or not but even for you to understand whether the guy is talking to you in truth or in deception or leading you towards deception you need to have the discerning spirit for which you need to pray again anyway you are praying for discernment why don't you supplicate it directly to god why you need a mediator who taught you this gospel who taught you this philosophy or doctrine bible clearly tells you don't even have a mediator with the father jesus himself said i have unveiled he 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 torn the veil into two right? when he was crucified and he said it is finished earth quaked and it went all the way towards the temple of god and it had torn the veil that leads us to the most holy place inner sanctuary and therefore what it symbolically represents no more veils no more mediators direct encounter direct connection direct interaction with the father yes which was the case in genesis 2 god used to come down and talk to them in fellowship and all that but genesis 3 onwards sin entered and it had you know whatever had been um, uh, unveiled again the veil was you know uh, dropped down and then again there is a disconnectivity between the father and us but again we re regain that connectivity then why you need a sign why you need a prophet why you need a prophetess why you need to go to this meeting that prayer sit at home and talk to the father he loves that beloved psalm 14:2 says the following that his eyes are all over the world is there no one who understands me i'm connecting it with this understanding in maturity or understanding be mature in spiritual understanding be a matured christian paul said that no and psalmist also saying the same The Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of man to see if there are any any means any one who understand who see God what understanding understanding that our God is watching over us while you're praying he's not closing his eyes he's not closing his ears and for that also verses there in Isaiah 50 and 59 right my ears are not heavy for your prayers my hands are not shortened you believe in those prophecies you believe in the character of God Do you trust him enough? The more you trust him, the more you have faith in him, the more you will stay back at home. Pandemic situation forces people to stay back at home, but then people still want to go to church and whoever traveled to church they all died. And they got infected. Even pandemic situation can't you have a little bit of spiritual sense and common sense? Don't you think that God expects you to at least in this time you could sit down, I'm locking down the city. God says I'm locking down the church why because you are the church I'm expecting where I want to come and have fellowship where I want to come and dwell more than me dwelling in that building church building I I'm more delighted and glad to be part of your building that is your body your mind your spirit I would like to work with you 
and i am longing and i am desperate see god looks down from heaven so psalm 142 and zechariah 4 and also says the same right is is either scanning the world to and forth something like that um yeah when i while i say something like that which means i don't remember it by heart right that's why i used the word something like that but i'm going to read it for you right why am i reading all this for you therefore you understand it hmm zechariah 10 they are the eyes of the lord which scan to and for throughout the whole earth he's not going to scan his creations he's not going to scan his own planets and creations because he knows very well how they will behave they have not violated the standards or law right the geological laws the earthly laws the aerodynamic laws everything is operating as of it is have you seen any time sun saying i'm so tired i will not rise up today or sun says you know i'm very very excited i love this day therefore i'm not going to set have you seen any time sun behaving that way no moon saying oh i want people to understand how important i am today i will not come and give light on earth there are many villages who are dwelling because of sunlight and moonlight only there is no electricity they don't have money to buy oil or uh, lamp or something like that they all dwell in that moonlight if moon doesn't come that's it many villages will be like shut down in the night and god is merciful and this moon also understands i have to come because i have a duty to fulfill on earth but it is we human beings who are made in the image of christ image of god and christ like mindset is given to us and new covenant has been established and glory in the new covenant has been revealed to you as per second corinthians 3 the more it is given the more rebels we have become against god more rebellious we are but look at these creations they don't have mouth to talk or ears to hear they just have heard one thing rise and set that's it they got the doctrines sorry instructions and for several millions of years they are doing their job the age of the sun is several million years so you heard that been formed brought back to its original shape 6000 years ago but the age of the earth is 4.5 billion years yeah some other creations were existing and the lucifer was set as the lord over them by god and he became devil ezekiel 28 isaiah 14 are references take and read okay but bible went passive about those creations why because it's unnecessary why it is unnecessary bible talks about you and me to read this itself once life span is not enough then what is where is the time and where is the energy to read about the other generations and what are you going to do by reading about those generations to understand about you who you are it takes what these many hours 50 to hours we have taken to understand to help you understand the real who you are what is the condition of your spirit what is your spiritual quality what is the standard what is your relationship with god how connected you are and where the holy spirit is whether he is dwelling or evil spirit is dwelling who is ruling and governing your spirit we are finding answers for all these questions and for this one life span is not enough right what i'm trying to say is that as much as the creations obey god you don't obey therefore god is eyes are scanning to and fro back and forth scanning home scanning you and me looking at our looking at the condition of our spirit and are you not understanding he he asks his questions a question every day and with a lot of longingness in his heart with a lot of desperation in his heart he looks every day down the earth upon the mankind when are you going to repent and it's very personal he's going to ask to every creation his expectations are towards every mankind not only to you and me non christians too they are their children also sorry they are his children also have you all understood what i'm saying i don't think it's a very tough doctrine to understand right it's easy okay <sighs> okay time to move on right they will not hear me now you understand they will not hear me because why their heart is after something else or someone else their belief is in that pastor and that brother and that church yeah some people are attached towards that that church is very powerful brother ah uh-huh. there is no powerful church more than your body your body is the powerful church in which the holy spirit dwells therefore don't give that glory to some church building or some some other person don't transfer it and insult god they will not hear me you understand why god told this because why they are always after sign they are always after prophets 
they are always after prophetess and um what to say prophecies and all that everything is written every single word of god is like prophecy do you know that it's all about your belief system yeah when your faith level is super matured this prophecy will take place because why the words and promises of god are yes and amen and you are going to create it by faith and it will happen and heaven doesn't deny that father never says to your faith faith and by faith if you have created something father never says how can you do this no father in fact he is asking the other way around when are you going to create things by yourself by faith things that are non existing i mean things that are yet to take place you will create it and that's what god expects why because you are like him and he wants you to be a creator too like him and you are created in his image and you are he is king of kings and you are a king he is the super creator and you are a creator too you will create solutions for the troublesome situations you will create health for that illness you will create redemption for all the problematic situations that brother or sister is coming to you and talking about and they request you to pray and you will be the person and you will teach them how to pray next time they don't come to you you need to teach them to build them independent and make them rely on god and not to come to you okay you understand verse number 22 therefore tongues are for a sign not to those who believe but to unbelievers which means what brother those who shall seek for this gift of tongues desperately and always you see them see i am not saying you shouldn't pray for the gift of tongues bible also doesn't talk like that i told you right three things i always ask god i want to become perfect like him matthew 5:48 i want to become like jesus john 14:12 i also want to speak to god in mysteries great experience what 1 corinthians 14:2 these are my three prayers but of which if god wants me to make a prioritize i will prioritize matthew 5:48 and john 14:12 and if he says i can grant only two petitions out of these three i will say i don't need spirit a gift of tongues it's okay i will talk to, i want to become like you then why the secrets and all that i am already like god then i don't need any secrets i am already like god you understand bible doesn't uh, stop us to be desperate even but some people know always it's about tongues some churches always they will say speak in tongues speak in tongues we are not speaking in tongues oh, oh holy spirit does not come upon you brother where is it written that the only sign symbolical representation of one having the holy spirit is all about he speaking in tongues P- paul says i never speak in tongues in public that means what no holy spirit is with him huh? jesus never spoke in tongues in public in private he might have spoken that is my own imagination because he want to talk mysteries with god about his ministries and which the devil he doesn't want to which which, uh, which he doesn't want the devil to hear that's my imagination right but otherwise there is no evidence jesus spoke so jesus doesn't have holy spirit huh? who is laying down all this traditional doctrines and rules and law book and it's a man made law book therefore say no to it i am talking in a decent language in a indecent language say please get lost yeah don't speak all this nonsense to me sorry this is not in my bible therefore tongues are for a sign yeah for not to the not to those who believe but to unbelievers for those who believe what is the sign the sign itself is the word of god word of god written and down clearly by a person his name is yahuwe and he signed in the blood of his son jesus yeah it's like a covenant agreement god says test and see yeah test me and see who i am through the word through the promises from my promise you claim and see whether it happens or not if it doesn't happen then come and question me god challenges us have you ever tested god that way you need not test god because why he is definitely going to fulfill his promise he is god of truth he is god of righteousness and he is upright there is no lie in him he is father of truth there is no evil deeds in him as um, as much as the darkness has nothing to do with light yeah these kind of unrighteous deeds and unholy deeds has nothing to do with god they are yes and amen do you believe that you don't need this gift of tongues yeah how gently paul see paul could have told this straight away in 1 corinthians 14:1 but he see how gently he speaks and then he finally conveys a important point hey 
Don't waste your time, man. Uh, who believe? But to unbelievers, this is given. This is given. But prophesying is not for unbelievers, but for those who believe. What is this prophesying? Oh, then I should pray that God should talk to me. I should hear the voice of the Father. That is one way of receiving the prophetical gift. But then you know what? That is not exactly what he is saying. He is saying you are grounded and rooted in the promises of God. Every promise of God is like that prophecy. And Bible covers all the situations of the world. That's why I emphasized it. Any circumstance you will have a promise. That promise itself is a solution. Yeah. And that solution is a prophecy. Which means what? You are claiming that prophetical word, that promising word by faith. And it takes place. That is the character of a true believer. That must be the character of a true believer. And that is also definitely a prophetical gift already. Bible is full of prophecies and promises. What are you running after? What more you need? What more you need from God? What more you expect from God to talk to your in your inner ears? Forget it, brother. We are not worthy to receive his voice. But anyway, you will hear him in the heaven. And just 40 years or 50 years or 60 years, 70 years. That's it, man. You're going to be with God and you're going to hear him lifelong. Why are you so desperate? Oh, while I'm on earth, I need to hear him and all that. Don't cry like a baby. Be a matured Christian. That's exactly what we are dealing with. Right? So let's proceed. Let's proceed. We will try to close today. Therefore, if the whole church comes together in one place and all speak with tongues and there come in those who are uninformed or unbelievers, will they not say that you are out of your mind? This is the condition of church. Insane church. Yeah. Unchrist. Like mindset, right? Not Christ like mindset. They have resigned from the relationship with Christ. Insane church, mad church, noisy church, no spiritual church, noisy church. Clapping hands and rubber rubber, full of commotion, shabba shabba, rubber rubber. Some people rolling on the ground, throwing the chairs and pushing the other brother and falling on the person. Is this the way you think how Holy Spirit operates a church? Definitely these are demonic manifestations read the bible carefully wherever jesus went to heal the demon possessed people just observe the pattern of their behavior pattern rolling on the ground foams coming out of their mouth falling backward right pushing themselves on fire or pushing each other harming themselves this is the external uh, manifestation of what is inside of them that is demon position now tell me don't you think this same pattern is available or visible in the church what is that church antichrist church are you living there huh? for 30 years you are having fellowship in the church that means your 30 years you have been having fellowship with antichrist why because the spirit of antichrist is already at work bible says you are a fool if you are going to wait for that great tribulation and triple six and all that concept many catholics believe that I mean, all the Catholics believe that. Antichrist will come no, no. Antichrist spirit is already there, brother. He will take one form and he will become that one man authority. And that will be a great tribulation. That will be the uh, commemoration of that great tribulation period. That is different. This is already in place. And you are having fellowship with the Antichrist. Are you part of such church? Shame on you, my beloved. Shame on you. What you were thinking? You were having fellowship with Christ? No, but with the demons. You see? And somebody is coming, an unbeliever. Imagine if this, in the midst of this commotion, you bring an unbeliever. You bring a non-Christian. You bring a Hindu brother. You get a Muslim sister. You get another person who has not understood about Christ. Although he was living like a Christian. But looking at this commotion and all that, no, they will run away from Christianity. They will resign from Christ forever. And his blood is in your hands. Yes, you made him run away from Christ because of your immaturity, spiritual immaturity. His blood is in your hands. Who knows? You could have built that person as another Apostle Paul and he would have raised another 500 churches. And those people's blood, he would have saved from destruction. 
and all these people together they will raise their fingers against you it was you who deceived and you see he is saying you are out of your mind they will call that church as a stupid church mad church insane church useless church demonic church antichrist church i have gone almost everywhere uh, i mean places like this many places i have gone and you know what those days i didn't know much about bible i mean i have not been grounded and rooted this much and it will take me months some churches it took me 6 years to discover those were bunch of antichrist people yeah i have gone through those experiences i told you i have almost like 27 years of journey in the spiritual life and i am an young person still i know that now the age of 18 i came out of catholic congregation and for by some me- means i feel the traditional churches are far better because their deception is not so deep it's easy for god to work on those guys i'm telling you this honestly i'm telling you but it's easy it's very hard for god to crack these kind of hard nuts hard hard people they are deceived completely they are blindfolded completely they are not going to accept it even if god were to come they will call god a you know in the name of belzebub or oh, belzebub has come but the real bells book they have kept in their hearts this is called as deception true definition of deception okay verse 24 and 25 we will close today okay but if all prophecy and an unbeliever or an uninformed person comes in he is convinced by all he is judged by all right if all of them are prophesying in the plain language i told you two forms of prophecy one is receiving it from the god and interpreting another thing is the best uh, manner of prophecy i love it bible also expects you to do that claim the words of god speak from the words of god promises of god quote the verses and make all the believers to meditate may a person or a brother or a sister in church lead that service 5 minutes let us all meditate on this verse and let the brother lead the revelation read now how we are leading right holy spirit is using me to lead all of you isn't it and we are all able to meditate and analyze it together like that you keep analyzing what happens it's like very plain and clear obvious for that unbeliever he understands it and he will also refer the bible oh is it like written like this this is the meaning huh? and he will go home and he will meditate another 20 verses and he will come and ask you more questions he will grow spiritually don't you want that that is the ultimate need right verse number 25 and with that we will close today is such a victorious day isn't it we are winding up this 1 corinthians 14 after 8 hours of discussion wonderful thank you lord and thus the secrets of his heart are revealed uh, through the word of god the word of god will unearth unveil excavate what is hidden in your heart and it will be revealing the petitions and so falling down on his face he will worship god and report that god is truly among you you want the heathens with that will close we you want the heathens unbelievers to um accept jesus then speak from the word of god speak in a plain language speak in a simplistic simplistic format and explain it and therefore they are going to accept Jesus as their savior and it is also needed for those Christians who are already in deception and who think you know this is all about spirituality and all that they also need this kind of you know experiences and studies and revelations from the word of god it's going to help both the categories of people i hope beloved you all have understood if you have not understood because this is a very very complicated subject right if we are talking from on this 25 verses for 8 hours you can understand how detailed they are and holy spirit did a fantastic job in helping us heads bowed and eyes closed heavenly father we want to thank you for this wonderful time of fellowship and we appreciate lord for all your mercies for all your guidance for your exhortations teaching us and preaching to us thank you for shedding light on us help my brother and sister to grow as matured christians in their spiritual deeds god bless thank you my father in jesus name we pray amen thank you my beloved thank you for staying connected um subscribe to our channel get access to our playlist videos and um please go through these teachings it's going to help you to grow spiritually and share it with your friends relatives and family may all of us grow in christ and we will meet one day 
in paradise and and that day is going to be a very joyful day and and what is going to take us there teachings like these doctrines like these that's why you should be connected and share it be instrumental in the hands of god to spread this word god bless amen